Ave Satanus, everybody. Today I wanted to talk about does God have free will? Yes or no? If you answered yes, you might want to rethink that position. You see, the argument most commonly used by theists when confronted with the atrocities committed by their God in the Bible, including placing the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in the Garden of Eden, when he supposedly knew that they would eat of its fruit, is the free will proposition. It is based on the assumption that man has free will and that God does not wish to interfere with that free will. Well, first before I get on the subject of God's free will, I wish to delve into the creation story told in the book of Genesis. God creates the world by simply speaking it into existence, uh, therefore bringing something into existence from nothing magically. He forms Adam from the dirt and breathes life into him via some form of CPR, I'm assuming. He then creates Eve from Adam's rib because somehow he is incapable of creating a perfect human being from the earth a second time. Anyway, I digress. The tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is placed within the Garden of Eden at the center. Now, Eve is a curious creature, as all animals are, and wonders why she cannot eat of the fruit. The serpent, who is commonly thought of as Satan, Lucifer in disguise, even though he in Judaism, the serpent is simply just that, a serpent, speaks to her and convinces her that the fruit is good and that she will be like God himself. The problem with the entire story is that Adam and Eve, before eating of the forbidden fruit, did not know what good and evil were. They had no concept of morality. The choice they were given was to obey God or disobey Him. This does not constitute a moral choice. Without the knowledge of good and evil, they did not have the capacity to make such a choice, and therefore did not have free will. They were then unjustly exiled from paradise for committing a sin that God Himself was responsible for. Thus the free will argument is dealt a critical blow. Now, on to the concept of God's own free will. According to Christians and the other two Abrahamic followers, God is all-seeing and all-knowing. According to them, He is omnip omniscient. He can see into the future and knows everything that has been or ever will be. This, of course, includes everything that He Himself will ever do. This being said, God cannot change his mind on any subject. He knows what he will do and will be unable to alter that in any way as he is all-knowing. If God cannot change his mind, then he does not have free will and is a slave in his own right but to the future. He also cannot give man free will because God has no concept of it and would not be able to allow human beings to have choices. Also, if he cannot change his mind, he is not omnipotent. Omniscience and omnipotence cannot coexist. God is claimed to be both by his followers. God himself is a contradiction, and as philosopher Ayn Rand said, contradictions cannot exist. To conclude, the argument from free will used by theists is useless and disproven. It is a ridiculous assertion, and they should just abandon it before it makes them look ignorant and stupid. Well, more so than they already are. The argument from omnipotence is fallacious, because he cannot do anything according to Christians, because if you say, can God create a rock that he cannot lift, they would say no. Here's the problem. If he cannot create a rock that he cannot lift, then he is not omnipotent. If he can create a rock that he cannot lift, then he cannot lift that rock, therefore he is not omnipotent. The Judeo-Christian Islamic God, as a result, does not exist. I'd like to thank you all for your time. Hail Satan, hail thyself.